that is taking away the truth. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's... Yeah. I just find it so horrifying that anyone would want to do this. You know, the thing is, I can understand in, in Europe, you could take, let's say, St. Paul's Cathedral in, um, in London. St. Paul's mm-hmm. Cathedral is built on a site which goes back into pagan worship. And this is common within Europe to have churches, because when the Christians were having to convert, when the missionaries were over converting pagan people, they integrated the old traditions and the old religions. Yes. So you get yes. this mix and match. And so they thought, well, why build a church over there when your people are already congregating here? This is a mm-hmm. respectful thing to do, to just build a church or a cathedral in that place. And yes. you're honoring yes. the land, you're honoring the ancestors, you're honoring in the future, you can't go wrong. You know, right. there is an honor which is going all the way through into the roots and up into, you know, the tree of life. Yes. Into the roots yes. and up into the branches. And, and we're talking and, and, about things yeah. again, aren't we? No, we're off on. One. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I said we're off on one again. Going off oh, on I know. Tangent. Digression. But it's so much fun, Terry. I, I, I mean, why stick with the script? What's the point? <laughs> well, if I was John Lennon, I might like to sing some of my most famous songs. <laughs> but You're, as I'm you, not John Lennon, I don't need you, to. <laughs> t- Terry, you are more than welcome to sing anything you like. And if you sing Patsy Cline, I'll join you. How's that? Absolutely love her. Patsy oh, Cline, f- what a darling. Oh, phenomenal. I don't want to, go, phenomenal. I don't want to break into crazy because I'm enough of that already. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. I was, I was, the other day I was um, on the phone with a friend of mine and we were both in a somewhat flustered mood. And, uh, and I so- somehow we got on the topic of country music and I, I'm still not quite certain how it happened because, you know, when you're chatting with someone and he's having a drink and you're having a, a little cocktail, uh, sometimes things happen without you knowing it. Fun. And it was, it's all in good fun. And, you know, the, the, the dangerous thing about Campari is that it's so good for you that, um, you know, you can't just have one small glass. You have to have two or three or four or seven. And so, I love Campari. what it's, I love Campari. Oh my goodness gracious. With lemonade what? or on its own? On, well, with soda and a squeeze of orange or a squeeze of lime. Or you do or the Campari and soda with little... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's delicious. Don't you like it? Um, no? Do you know, I've not tried Campari since I was a young man. Um, oh, it's delicious. I used to drink it then. Yeah. But that was, well, and, that and, was just, you know, uh, I, was, I was just showing off, really, back in those yeah, days. Well, yeah. Showing uh, off. Nobody else was drinking it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and 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 here, of course, you know, Terry, we it, it's so hot and so humid. It, it's you have to drink something cold and refreshing, and I don't want anything too sweet, so I drink Campari, and I mean, it's delicious. Now, Actually, it's. I'm sorry. Hitting on this subject of alcohol, I yes. can go to a page in the Daily Telegraph today, which is one of our sort of posh papers it's what you know it's not one of the common papers it's a it's a it's a good paper but that has a, a good bit of truth in there and the yeah. story in there today is that jack daniels as in jack daniels of tennessee yeah. the um recipe for that was actually from one of their slaves a slave oh, that was known dear. rather than yeah and then it was from the slave it went to the reverend and then from the Reverend, it was then passed on to Mr. Jack Daniel. And uh, um, they got this mix of Sam Ash and all the rest of it, put it together. And Jack Daniels was, um, and now Jack Daniels, the company, have actually admitted this for the first time, that the recipe did come from this um, unheralded oh, who's um, long since lost in, in history. Oh dear. 
Oh, dear. You know, it's another one of these examples of um, being ripped off because you're not regarded as being equal. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. No equality. Yeah. You know, right. it, it reminds me of a, there was a, a comedic strip on television when I was a kid growing up, um, 50 years ago now, and there was the three characters, the short one, the middle tall one, and the very tall one. And it was um, the uh, short one looks up at the middle one because he's better than him and looks up the tall one because he's even better than the one in the middle. And so the one oh, who's the tall one, who is the aristocrat, is looking down to the middle classes, and they're looking down to the working classes. And that oh, is the way things used to be, you know? Not yeah. anymore. Mm-hmm. But yeah. this equality that we're always trying to enrich, discover, and integrate into society and community it needs to be um, recognized as something that's more important than the value it's held in today. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. It's, oh my goodness, it's, I don't even know, it, there's so much of that which has happened. Or, and, and, and look at, you know, even somebody, you know, um, in, in modern media I've today. I've got yes. a question for you. Yes. This please. is a very important question out of my curiosity rather than anything else. Um, yes. Because you're in America, you're doing this radio station over there, and I'm making some remarks. How much is this going to rattle cages over over where you are? I've absolutely no idea. Uh, and quite frankly, I don't care. Um <laughs> Uh, I, I, well, and, and let me and let me let me expand on that, if I may. Um, I, I, I'm 51 years old. I will be 52 in October, and I have learned uh, in the short time that I have been involved in the paranormal world or the paranormal community that to have an opinion and to stand on your own two feet is probably the greatest heresy that one can commit. And to to think for oneself and to make one's own interpretations are all, almost um, what would almost class define one as an apostate. Um, you know, people yeah. are not encouraged to think. People are encouraged to accept everything at face value to say, well, if so-and-so said it, then it must be true. Or if so-and-so is doing this, then it must be true. Uh, to, to, to stand on your own two feet and say, this is what I believe, this is what I do, is to fly in the face of popular uh, opinion. And I've had some horrendous scrapes, uh, some frightening confrontations, with humans, mm-hmm. not with anything else, although I've had plenty of those, too. So a friend of mine gave me some very good advice um, a few years ago, and he said, Sanj, you have to do what you do. Yeah. And he you was know, absolutely an right. Mine, yep. An old boss of mine years ago told me, uh, when I won him, because I used to be involved in trade union activity as a young man, and I remember no, not you, Terry. Boss. Oh, yes, me. Oh, yes. Working class <laughs> radical. <laughs> oh, yeah, very, very much redneck um, attitude back in my younger days. And I remember uh-huh. taking this um, argument to the boss um, on behalf of one of, uh, one of the, 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 the members I was representing. And um, when he disagreed with my proposals... I said, you do realize you're going to upset a lot of people here. And he simply remarked, Mm -hmm. I'm not here to make friends. I've never forgotten that one. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And he educated me that day. (laughs) Yes. What I realized is, you know, you, you are representing all these people and they will stab you in the back. Given half a chance, they will stab you in the back. 
Mm-hmm. But equally, you know, it, it's like talking about having um, an opinion and being yourself and owning up to that. It also comes with a responsibility, especially when you take these opinions and you turn them into teaching. Because yes. I could have, let's say, 20 students that I'm teaching. And when you deliver a little bit of information, you've got 20 brains that are translating that information into an impression which they will take. So they could all have different, 20 different takes on what I'm saying. Now, to teach people in that manner, you're giving them the opportunity to grow. You're giving them the opportunity to learn and grow in their own way. Unless, of course, yes. you are the sort of person who comes along and you will manipulate the situation. And then you will take all these opinions, all these ideas, and you will recognize them, right, they're not as clever as me because they're tribal. I'm a tribal leader. I'm going to Mm -hmm. make sure that they do as they're told. And so this manipulation is so easy to use if you are calculating and a nasty person. Mm -hmm. Personally, I do not like people like that, but you get them in every walk of life. You do. So you, you do. You know, it's the responsibility that we have with knowledge and information. You know, we have to be very, very careful the way we use our knowledge and information and um, make sure that if we do give the information to people and um, they are going to use it, then it has to be explained what the ins and outs and the ups and downs and how you it's like i was saying to begin with um do not go and investigate paranormal activities especially i mean for instance <laughs> you've got to laugh at this one 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 this lady i know she was doing um some tv research for um one of the british channels and she had mm-hmm. to go to um Huntsville Prison in Texas, oh dear. which goes back, you know, into the 1800s. It's been yeah. there forever. John Wesley Harding and people like that were, were, were held there. Mm-hmm. And um, they still have the death penalty there. So she went to see somebody being electrocuted in the electric chair, executed in the electric chair. Mm-hmm. And how brave is that? How brave is that? But to feel, you know, that darkness that you get in that sort of place, you are putting yourself into that position. You are very vulnerable because mm-hmm. you don't know what you're letting yourself in for. I mean, I've, I've got, I know one of my students, she's a psychiatric nurse who works in um, hardcore prisons in Britain. And um, I know how she gets affected because All these people are competitive, they're violent, and they are creating a negative atmosphere. And imagine you've got 150 years, 200 years of negative atmosphere being built up, and suddenly um, that prison is closed down. But if Mm -hmm. it's anything like Britain, you could get a psychiatric unit or a prison. What do they do? They build it into flats. Poor unsuspecting families... They move in there with their two kids, and their two oh, kids dear. are screaming all night long. I wonder why. Oh, you know? boy. Yeah. Yeah. I recently had the opportunity when I was doing um, some clearing in London, the first um, sort of a psychiatric unit which was set up for mad people was um, a place called Bedlam. It now exists under a big office block. And I was allowed to go in there. And my goodness gracious me, I can tell you that the energy in that place has not changed in a hundred oh years, however long. Oh, dear. You know? Oh, oh. Isn't it? That I, Isn't oh, that's, that's, that's frightening. That's really frightening. It's so, never been you know, cleansed. No, no please, one's touched all your it. Listeners, all your listeners, please, if you are vulnerable... Do not, do not go to these places which have a psychic energy which is so 
overpowering, it'll make you feel so uncomfortable. And yes. when you get nervous in a situation like that, when you lose control, you do not know what you're going to pick up because psychic energy is alive. It's absolutely alive and it is very active. And when you see things like the Amityville Horror, these movies, they are real, believe you me. Oh, they w- are without real. question. Absolutely. And, and dark horses. They are and, and very dark, yes. And, and not only that. About... Yeah, sorry. Oh, no, no, go ahead, please. I, I was just going to say, it doesn't matter whether we're dealing with um, devils and demons in Christianity, whether we're dealing with the, with the jinn in um, Islamic traditions, or whether we're dealing with uh, the wrathful deities within Buddhism, or we're dealing with the Kalima in, um, in Hinduism, we mm-hmm. are talking about dealing with an underworld of possibilities, which is scary. And yes. we don't even have to look into religions. We can go into mythology. We can de- go into Persephone in, in ancient Greece and so on and so forth. Uh, we can go into Loki and Viking Scandinavian mythology. You can go into these forces of light and dark. They've always been with us and they've always been here to scare us and stories of the bogeyman. Yes. Talking of the bogeyman, I mentioned earlier about Huntsville Prison and um, the story, the, the character who was once there called John Wesley Hardin. He was mm-hmm. actually referred to as the bogeyman in his day because he was such a notorious killer um, that oh, the mothers gosh. would warn their children off and say mm-hmm. to them, um, if you do bad things, John Wesley Hardin is going to come and get you. Uh-huh. Well, and, and, you know, and, it's, and it's funny taking that a step further. And there, I do have another question I want to ask you, uh, Terry. If you, I just need to uh, step away from the microphone for just a moment. If you could just hold on, I'll be right back, please. Just a moment. Indeed. Thank you. I could start singing crazy now, couldn't I? Bit of Patsy Klein. Crazy. I wish I had a good voice. Be much nicer. Terry, I'm so sorry to keep you waiting. I just had to get no problem, some no water. Problem. My throat's a little dry. Uh, but what? Singing. I'm sorry, what? I wish I had a good singing voice because I could sing crazy or something like that. Well, please go ahead. You're, you're, I, I, I won't stop sing. you. I promise. I mean, I've got a better <laughs> voice than me. She's the one you ought to get on singing. Oh, now that's a good idea. Anne, please call back and sing with us. Um, and I promise you can you can whack my shins if I don't do a good job. <laughs> oh, she's going to shoot me when she finds hears that. Um, but, well, here's a, a couple of things, um, and 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 I think your your advice about not dealing with this these 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 things is is absolutely spot on it, it it is dangerous and and when you open that door or when you welcome the that presence in you don't know what you're dealing with it, it's extremely dangerous 
And for someone who's not prepared, it can be quite overwhelming, if not debilitating. Uh, but my question then, Terry, becomes what, what, you know, there are people, for example, and, and th- this is an experience I've had. Um, and yes, I'm going to plug my new book. So be it. It's my show. Um, one of my, 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 my new book was just came out a few weeks ago. Tales of the Night Watchman opens with a true account of the first time in my life that I consciously opened the door to permit someone to leave. And I was exploring an old theater in northern Michigan and encountered the ghost of the Night Watchman. And he had been there for close on 70, 80 years guarding the theater. Um, Knew that he, you know, he did realize that he, you know, was not living but mm-hmm. could not leave because it was his job to guard the theater. And he actually said, I, I, this is my job. And so I had to convince him that there were other people there now who had bought the theater, who were going to take care of it. And it was time, you know, he could go. And I had no idea how to do this. I, I simply, I simply opened the door and he passed through it and I shut it. Yeah. And, and I burst into tears. I became very emotional and uh, was really quite overwrought. And, and I remember uh, going out of the theater and meeting my client who had you know, purchased the building and saying, I, I think I need either one drink or several, but in large quantities or so, you know, something, something <laughs> you know, silly, silly like that. And, and, you know, but there are people who, you know, come face to face with, these realities unexpectedly by accident and, and deal with them in ways that they cannot explain and, and, yet, and yet somehow manage to pull through it. But at the same time, it becomes, I think, an awakening for them that they realize th- this is a gift. This, this is something that I did not know I could do. But the and, thing is, what, you, what, what would you find when you're training people up? is that with spiritual or psychic work, um, there's so many different frequencies. It's like, you know, you listen to um, the top 50 uh, pop songs of 1969, 79, 89. The themes, the tunes, the vibration, you know, there's so many differences. And you can intermingle them all together and you can come up with a load of other differences. And so being on these frequencies and wavelengths, Everyone has to find the way that they um, work that makes them feel comfortable and safe. And some people can evolve and develop. It's like you can have um, somebody who could be trained up to um, a low level of teaching, whereas others would be um, a professor, you know? And, Mm -hmm. And it's finding the vibration. It's finding the place where you can slot into in, into that socket and feel really comfortable with the way you do things. And by you opening up a door and saying, Night Watchman, go, I mean, my question to you would be, um, where are you sending him? To go where? Uh, into the light. So you actually emphasize the light? Yes. Mm-hmm. Good. Good. Because you yes. have to give them somewhere to go. Yes. It's, it's for instance, we, I was with my advanced class recently. I do a lot of work in London, particularly the old mm-hmm. city of London, which sort of goes back into uh, longer than you can remember. And um, by the Roman wall, um, I was aware of a number of Roman soldiers. And they'd been there for, what, 2,000 years? Oh, Thereabouts, my goodness. 1,800 yes. years? Yes. And the reason they were still there is because no one had given them the order to leave. So when the fall of the Roman Empire took place, there was mm-hmm. insufficient information to get out to all the satellites to give yes. each um, a division um, an opportunity to, um, to be relieved of their duties. And the only person who could possibly relieve them of their duties was Caesar himself. So whoever had that, you know, whether it was Julius or or, or Nero or whichever was a Caesar, they are all Caesars and all appropriate. So you have to call in the word of Caesar 
to link with someone who will come forward to give them permission to leave. Yes, yes. You know? And, you know, there's so many different ways of death. For instance, you could take the Native American Indians, for instance. Um, if um, you buried somebody face down, you did that because the spirit could not leave the body. Now, how many, um, how many people did that happen to who believe in that particular belief system at that time? And mm -hmm. how many of them actually been able to break away from that belief system without any help? Yes. You know? I, right, right. It's it's what we believe. It's what we understand is possible. And if we recognize that something is possible, then we can go ahead and do that. So much. You know, the attitude of things being impossible or not likely. We can't mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. um, there's some sort of rule or restriction or some regulation that says you can't do that. You know, right. And we have right. to remove boundaries. We have to remove. I, I teach people and say, look, when you're when you're teaching about. Uh, when when you're learning about spiritual work, um, always look at life like in the American West, where there are frontiers. You are going across a territory. You are going to a frontier. There is no state yet. There's no order. There's no ways. It's a wilderness. And you are constantly out in that wilderness and you will never, ever, ever come out of the wilderness until such time you're feeling completely comfortable that you've learned sufficient to know that you can sort of um, hang up in the town, go to the hotel, have a nice bath, have a Campari and soda, sit down, put your feet up and listen to the radio and yes. listen to Sanjay talk. <laughs> no, listen to Patsy Klein. Listen to Patsy Klein. <laughs> but you know, it's it, it. You know what I'm saying? It's it, it, it's um. It's life is something that we are learning all the time, and we never yes. ever stop learning. We learn something every day, and people who don't learn, I mean, I see it all the time. You know, you have people come to see you that are coming to saying, "Heal me, heal you what?" Yes. Mm -hmm. what are you holding on to that needs to be healed you've seen a doctor you've seen so many different therapists and you're coming to the next one who can be a miracle worker for you because you don't want to take responsibility you don't want to change the way you're looking at life mm -hmm. you know absolutely it's, this is this yeah. is the one thing i admire about americans the way you support one another in success where you've got a success amongst you people are saying wow that is really fabulous that's terrific whereas over here people get jealous oh oh trust me terry people get jealous here too trust me well i'm sure they do in hollywood <laughs> oh no they they get jealous across the board across the land it's it's, it's a universal human characteristic it, uh, it, it's I'll not confined, <laughs> but when you have a when you have a true dear friend who is absolutely in support of everything you do, then that friend is going to support all of your achievements. Um, my father, who was an extremely clever and very intelligent man, uh, used to say, "You don't find out who your friends are when things go badly." you find out who your friends are when things go well. And it took me a long time to understand that. And then one day I did, and it was a, it was quite an awakening uh, to say the least. And uh, you know, I, I, this is amazing to believe Terry, we only have uh, less than 30 minutes left. Um, <laughs> isn't it? It's lovely. Uh, you know what I wanted to talk to you about? I, Cause this just, fascinates me. Uh, I, I would love to talk about your work in South Africa and the the name that you were given, Jabula Manzi, the opener of doors. Could you, could you please share something of that with us, please? Well, it's very interesting because, you know, in, in each country, you, you, you have uh, different traditions. And um, 
the Sangama tradition is something which was there, which predates Christianity. Um, and the Sangama tradition goes back into understanding that you are um, a part of the land, that you yes. are a part of everything in the land. 